We have covered Greg Locke quite a bit lately, but I do think that there is another video of his worth watching on his channel. And it's titled, If You're Confused About What's Happening, Watch This Now. Now, I'm confused about what's happening. Honestly, 2021 has been an entire foster clock. So why don't we go ahead and see if Greg can give some context to this situation. Nay, if Pastor Greg Locke can give context to our lives. Send messages on Facebook. The president wants oh, you to Oh no, I don't need you to speak in that fast. No. No. No, Greg. Bad. Do not speak at that speed. Slow down. No more caffeine. Go to your room. Send messages on Facebook. The president wants you to see this. Send this to 15 of your friends. He's going to be on Newsmax tonight at A15. He's going to set everything right. And then Parler goes down. Then Twitter says something else. General Michael Flynn said this. Jenna Ellis said this. But Lynn Wood said this. And here's what Facebook said. But now. So this should probably be noted that this video came out two weeks ago. So I'm imagining this was roundabouts uh, when Trump was going to be. Uh, you know, ousted by Biden, like, officially. Uh, I think this is Greg holding on desperately that something was going to happen, which, of course, we, we know, since we're living in future land, that it didn't. That everything just ended up transferring as normal. But let, let's, let's partake in his delusions for a little bit. We can't get on Facebook because, you know, they've taken down our platform. Yada, 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 schmada. It can be demoralizing and it can be absolutely frustrating. That's why the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. I will be. That's affirmative. I will be exalted among the heathen. So uh, okay, so I wonder if uh, he actually is willing to talk to heathens. I have a few friends who are Norse heathens. They might be able to help them out there. But uh, anyway, more, more, more importantly, more importantly. Um, so this is Greg essentially telling his Christian constituents, uh, be steadfast. God is going to do his thing. And it's, it's kind of weird, right? Like they already tried engaging in their own uh, physical action at the Capitol, and that didn't work out too well. So now he's just telling his people to sit back and let God do his thing, which uh, apparently was just letting Biden get elected. Come on, Greg, start talking. You there you go. I've been just as guilty as the next person. Of a lot Scouring of Scouring YouTube for every video I could find. Look, I've got a lot of high-ranking individuals that I consider friends, but I stopped even asking them at this point because everybody has a different story. But let me tell you what story doesn't change. The story of the Bible. Oh, my God. Okay, everybody, go ahead and call the Grinch Department. We're here. We just got here. Greg, yes, the story of a book does not change. It has been the same for ages. That's not really a good point. I know that the point he's going to try to make is that uh, the world is crazy, so just rely on your Bible. Your Bible doesn't change like the world does, so it's comfortable. But have you ever considered, Greg, that the fact that the Bible doesn't change might actually be one of its greatest weaknesses? Because it can't speak to all generations equally, because as people progress further and further, they keep on having to recontextualize the Bible in order to maintain being Christians. Now, most of my Christian friends know I, I don't have a problem with them being Christian. Not at all. But it is interesting to me how much recontextualization is needed from the various different breeds of Christian, the, the Southern Evangelical and the Progressive Methodist are two completely different people, yet they generally try speaking from the same book. But it never changes. The Egyptians had boxed in the Israelites. Behind them was being drugged back to the bondage and slavery of Egypt. Before them, the Red Sea. A daunting insurmountable situation and when there was no way god made a way so is the red sea thing gonna happen with biden is is god 
is God going to part Biden's, uh, we're not going to talk about that, not on a PG stream. And then from, from out of the parted nether regions will come Trump, the God Emperor. Is that, is that what's going to happen, Greg? Because that sounds like what you think's going to happen. He parted the waters of the Red Sea and they walked through on dry ground, but he did it last minute. Look, folks, I'm telling you, America's in a mess. The world's in a mess. I preached it this past weekend at our church at Global Vision under the tent. We're living in difficult days, dangerous days, days in which we don't know what to believe. We don't know where to go, but there's a constant, and the constant is Jesus Christ. He's our hope. The local church is still the pillar and ground of the truth. The Bible is still the Word of God. We can still be infused with the power of the Holy Spirit. Stop fretting. Yep, just don't don't freak out. Everything's fine. <coughs> Woo! God's gonna do his thing. You know what rhymes with hope, Greg? Cope. And that's what I see a lot of right now. Greg, I'm concerned for you. I really am. I really am concerned, Greg. But I will watch the rest of your video. Stop worrying. For the next week or so, what we have to do is be still and let God move. He then have you considered shutting the fuck up on Twitter and letting God do his thing? No? Okay. He can still allow us to roll away the stone, but that's the only part in the miracle we get. He's got to resurrect the dead. Nobody else in the whole narrative got to say Lazarus come forth, just Jesus. They only got to roll away the stone, stand there with their hands in their pocket, kicking rocks, and watch what God was about to do. So we're at a place now where we put our hands in our pockets and we wait. We're still before the Lord. We're fasting. We're praying. Imagine thinking fasting is going to do anything. Ah, yes. I understand there's religious connotations here, but all it reads to me is, literally, I don't like the way the world is going right now. So in an effort to communicate to my deity, I shall starve myself for a few days. There's some thoroughfares in logic that don't seem to actually connect there. We're seeking wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, James 1, 5 says. And we need wisdom. We need discernment. We need discretion. But I'll tell you what we need. We need to be baptized, my friend, in boldness. We need to be covered from head to toe in boldness. No time to be cowards. Sit back and do nothing. But do it boldly. I'm getting some mixed messages here. We gotta be courageous, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta stand up for our rights. We gotta push back on what we believe, what we know to be true and right and biblical. And in this case, American. We still have our freedoms. Don't let them Jesus go. was a real no American what hero. Don't you dare roll over. Don't you dare let them bully you into a corner of silence identify you by calling you a bunch of names that shame you and humiliate you, and then you roll up and stop. Oh, no, it's not time to zip the lips. <laughs> okay, so so if somebody calls you a racist, instead of taking that criticism and trying to figure out what, what did I do, in context, was it racist? Was the joke I said racist? Was the thing I did racist? Who was I offending when I said this? Instead of trying to figure that out, apparently... It was better to just ignore it. Greg's advice, if somebody gives you constructive criticism or calls you a name in lieu of constructive criticism, just ignore it and continue being exactly the same person. Never change, never grow. It's time to be more bold than we've ever been, but for the next week or so, listen, we're gonna have to just wait on God. Keep standing your ground. Don't let them push you back. Don't let them win the tug of war. But stop all this, send this, and send that, and read this, and stay up all night watching this, and freaking out, and one day he's going to win, and one day he's going to lose, the next day, yada, 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 shmada, stop. Stop it. Just be still and patiently wait on God, because here's what the Bible says. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I'm going to give God thanks in advance for the parting of the waters of the Red Sea. So I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, there's a couple of issues here. First of all, 
I have to agree with Greg on something. Simply being anxious about something that's going to happen is not the most productive use of your time. I, I agree with that. Now, granted, there is a, a caveat there. If you have anxiety and cannot control it, th then, yeah, you can't, you can't do anything about that. But, more importantly, imagine, Greg, what it must feel like to be in your head where you've thanked God in advance for bringing Trump out of the parting of Biden's censored, and then it never happened. You have thanked God in advance for a thing that he did not and will not do for you. What must that do to a man's psyche? I'm curious. Like, realistically, what is it like to thank God in advance for a thing that you desperately want or need for him to do, and he just never does it? Well, I know what Greg did, because I've, I've been looking at his Twitter. The dude literally spends his entire time trying to recontextualize the ways in which God's helping. Uh, I guess God's going to subvert Biden. I guess, uh, no, Trump will come back in four years uh, to to depose Biden. That's the actual Trump prophecy. You know, what, whatever. There's, there's always a way. When the prophecy fails, there's always a way to pretend it didn't. He says, and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So quit beating yourself up because you don't have all the answers, because you don't have all the knowledge. Look, you're not going to get it. You're not going to know. Seek the power of the Holy Spirit. Get your nose out of the newspaper. Put it in the Word of God. And just don't follow the news. Just read about events that happened 2,000 years ago. Then you will learn everything. Wait. Prayerfully, wait. Because no matter how many videos you watch, including this one, no matter how many documentaries you try to feast yourself upon, no matter how much you do this or do that and try to fret and worry and figure it all out and connect the dots, you're not going to be able to. Let it play out. So then okay? why do you it's think, all Greg, why have you thought that you can connect the dots on any of this shit? You've been doing this for ages, trying to connect the dots on everything for your giant conspiracy theory not unrelated to Q. You've been doing this for a while. Why would you tell everybody else not to do the exact damn thing you're doing? In the script, and you better know God wrote the script. Then God wrote Joe Biden winning, my guy. So just be still. Know that he's God. Stand your ground. Don't give Satan an inch of authority in your life, because if he has it, you gave it to him. Stay <laughs> uh, Greg, let's not talk about how Satan delivers his inches. And against him, resist him. He will flee from you and go to bed and get some sleep. Wake up in the morning rejuvenated, revived, excited that we still live on planet Earth and we still have the privilege of serving Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, we are backed up to the Red Sea. Egypt is pursuing us. But God's about to open up the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing that we cannot contain. He's going to part the waters of the Red Sea. We're going to walk through on dry ground and we're going to sing the mighty praises of a great, big, huge, delivering God because there was never a miracle in the Bible before there was a problem. There always had to be a problem. So, Greg, are you still holding out for that miracle? Are you still holding out for the grand return of God Emperor Trump so that you can take his mushroom into your Red Sea parted anus? Is that... Is that a thing you're still waiting for? Because I don't think it's happening, my guy. I don't think it's happening. And I feel kind of bad that you think it's happening. Craig, please, come with me to reality. I, I beg of you. It's better here. I understand that in Fantasyland, you can pretend that God and Trump are still trying to do everything in their power to make you personally happy and get your church out of a tent. I understand that. But the reality of the situation is that Trump did not win. Biden won. There is not going to be a miracle here unless you recontextualize some mundane event and call that a miracle, which I think is exactly what you're going to do.
But what do you guys think he's going to do? What do you in the comment section, what do you who are watching think is going to happen with Greg Locke here? What are your predictions? And do you think they'll come true? If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and leave a like. If you want to subscribe to the channel, there are ways to do so. Under the video, go ahead and hit that button. And if you do so, please hit the bell notification icon so that you can know whenever we have new episodes coming out on the channel, new live streams, and everything else. If you enjoyed, please share with your friends. And in the description, you will find different ways you can support the channel if that is something that tickles your fancy. But I want to thank you for the view in any case. And as always, everyone, insert into video tagline here.